Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here, and today I'm taking a look at my new KRG C4 chassis. This just arrived to me a couple hours ago, and I was gonna finish up my Arkin EP5 video, but when the Pirillator guys showed up with a big Gobic tactical box, I knew it was the new chassis. So the EP5 is gonna have to wait a little bit. I'm very excited to show this chassis. Obviously, I just got it today, so I haven't used it in a match or anything. I threw my Zermatt Origin build into the chassis to just do some dry fire and see how the chassis feels initially, but this is just going to be showing its features on my very, very initial impressions after pulling it out of the box. Tom at Gobic Tactical really hooked me up. I believe this is one of the first C4 chassis in Canada, if not the first one, because the other dealers haven't been offering them yet. And I do know he did have to pull some strings in the background in order to get me this chassis as early as he did. So a huge thank you to Tom for all the support this season. It's been absolutely phenomenal ever since I joined the Gobic Tactical team, the support that he's shown me. And for those of you who are interested in this chassis, he will be offering it as a regular product as well. Now, the C4 has been on my radar for quite some time, even before they announced it at the beginning of the year at SHOT Show. Phil Vallejo and a few other shooters were running a prototype version of this chassis. And at the time, people weren't quite sure what it was, if it was gonna be like a new and improved Whiskey 3. But when they finally announced the C4 and showed all the features that were incorporated into it at SHOT Show, uh, that's when I told Tom at Go Big, if these are available in Canada, just put in an order for me as soon as possible because I knew for sure I wanted to try one out. I had been running my Whiskey 3 for some time and I also ran it for the entire 20, 2022 season and I absolutely love that chassis. The buttstock area is similar in the C4 so the ergonomics to me should be pretty easy to get used to. Anyway, I do want to show some things up close, obviously, so I'm going to pull the barreled action out of the chassis so I can more easily show it on camera, and I'll also adjust the camera angle to show you some close-up shots of the uh, new chassis here as well. All right, so here's the chassis on the table. I do not have the fore-end cover installed yet, just so I can show you the inside a little bit easier, and we'll go over that in one moment, but quickly before that, I do want to show what comes in the box, which isn't too much, but you do get a KRG sticker, which is always fun the paperwork for the chassis. Now, I would highly recommend reading this because it does give you some torque specs for the fasteners, as well as explains all the adjustments you can make for all the features on the KRG C4. So definitely some really good info in the paperwork there. You get two action screws, of course, for the C4 chassis. These are actually the same length, which makes things a little bit easier. They do come with a washer. And you also do get a small baggie of some other small items. What's really nice is KRG has included two hex bits with the chassis. This larger one, a little bit extended, is your 3 16 inch size for your standard action screws. Really cool that they included that. And then you get a little bit of a smaller one. I think this is three mil hex key. Uh, don't quote me on that, but this one's nice that they include this because all your adjustments and screws on the chassis use this bit. And then, I've never seen this included with a chassis before, but they have like a little sample tube of blue Loctite. And I was reading the paperwork and they actually recommend putting a drop of blue Loctite on the action screws, which I've never done, but it is included if you want to do that and you don't have Loctite. And lastly, this little baggie has four pins in it, which originally I was pretty stumped as to what these would be used for. But again, in the paperwork, which you should read, it says these pins are included for a more permanent installation of this fore end cover. Now, I'm not quite sure why you would need them because this cover is held on by six screws, which seem to be very secure. But there are these holes here, which I'm assuming line up for the use of these pins into the chassis. I didn't try, but that's presumably what they're for. Again, I don't know why you would need that. But before we install this onto the chassis, I do want to show the inside of the fore end here, which is you can see cut or machined out to accept some weights, very similar to the MDT ACC. KRG has now cut in a channel in this fore end and they do offer a weight kit for the KRG C4. So you can put in some internal weights here as well as some external weights that they offer to play around with the weight and balance of the chassis. So that is there. You also obviously don't need to run this cover to use the chassis. I'm sure some people will run it just open top like this and it still looks pretty nice. So anyway, let's throw on the cover here quickly. And this cover, as I mentioned before, is held on by six screws and there's only one position in which you can install it onto the fore end. It's not like the ACC Mirage Shield where you can move it 
along the forend. This one is simply just one position, but it does cover a large portion of the forend here. All right. So here is the chassis all put together. Obviously, before we go on, I do want to mention that there are a few things you have to configure when ordering a KRG C4. I think there's three things you have to choose. The first one is actually going to be the length of this cover. This is your standard optics cut, I believe they call it. And there's also an extended optics cut, which shifts this cutout forward by about two inches, I believe. And it gives you a little bit more clearance in your scope for sunshades, or if you want to run it lower to your barrel. So that's the first thing. Again, I ordered the standard. The second thing you have to decide on is what grip you want to run. There's a large, small, and this third option here is their, I believe they call it their finger support grip or something like that. But it comes with this side piece here that's supposed to give some support to your trigger finger to allow you to get a little bit of a more consistent trick consistent trigger pull. I've never tried one of these before and I just wanted to see how it felt. Um, I thought you could just pop off this little piece, this little support piece here, and it would become like a normal grip. However, there's actually a pin under this, this uh, support piece, which doesn't really allow you to do that. The last thing you have to choose in your C4 configuration is the cheek piece. I went with the, I think they call this like the enhanced, but it's basically just hard plastic. The, the other option you have is an over molded cheek piece with the rubber on top, which is not my preference. This is the same one on the Whiskey 3. So I went with it because I knew it would work well. So those are the three things you have to choose when ordering a C4. Now, before we go into the individual features of the C4, I thought, People might want to see this thing side by side with a few other chassis that I have. Obviously, the most similar one that I have is my Whiskey 3, good old trusty Whiskey 3. This has been my main competition chassis for about a season and a half, and I absolutely love the ergonomics of the Whiskey 3. If I lay it on top of the C4 here, you can see the buttstock and grip area is very similar and I've already set mine up to match in length of pull and cheek riser height but a lot of similarities in the ergonomics in terms of how it fits to the shooter so if you shoot a Whiskey 3 or an X-Ray the C4 is probably going to feel familiar in a lot of ways but obviously it gives you a much longer forend with an integrated Arca rail. Now the C4 is a little bit of a departure of what KRG has been doing in the past because it is a full monolithic design. So it's just one piece of aluminum from the very front all the way to the buttstock. It doesn't have the option of switching out four ends and buttstocks like their other chassis that they offer. But this basically has all the features that you would want in a competition chassis anyway. And I did also want to show it here beside my MDT ACC because the ACC is obviously known for its very long forend with an integrated arca rail and if i lie the KRG c4 on top of it you can see now it basically has the same length of arca rail so that's pretty neat so i'll put this aside okay so starting on the front of the new KRG c4 you can see there are some holes drilled and tapped on the top portion here for an additional Picatinny rail. If you want to run night vision, it does not come with the chassis. That's just an option. And on the very front here, you can see there is a lot of clearance for your heavy profile barrels. I don't know the exact spec on that, but I'm sure they probably list it on their website. And on the bottom side of the forend, you can see there's a lot going on. You obviously do have your full length arc rail. I did check it is in spec, not because I've had any issues with KRG specifically, but other manufacturers, when their arc rails are out of spec, it's really annoying because you have to tweak the size of all your arc rail accessories and whatnot. This one seems to be good to go. And you have a bunch of stuff going on here as well. M-lock, almost entirely. Uh, the length of the forend, but you also have all these little dimples and things machined cut into the forend. So the little dimples on the side here are for the really right stuff R lock system, and these horizontal cuts are for the new KRG Delta lug system. Both those systems work hand in hand with the Arca rail. I haven't tried either one of them yet, so I can't speak to how effective they work, but you have all the options built into this Arca rail, which is something a lot of manufacturers seem to be doing is integrating M-Lock, Arca Rail, and the new Really Right Stuff, R-Lock. 
Going on to the Magwell area of the KRG C4, this has a ton of adjustments built in, which is great not only for the centerfire folk, but also for the rimfire shooters, because everyone knows the 700 footprint rimfires like the, the Voodoos and the Rimexes and all those are quite finicky in how the mag sits relative to the action in the chassis or stock. So you have all the adjustments you could want built into this Magwell. So the rimfire crowd is gonna be really happy about that. And the centerfire crowd can use both AICS pattern and AW pattern mags in the KRG C4. So that's pretty cool for both crowds. You basically have three types of adjustments that you can do. The first one here is on the front edge of the magwell. There's sort of this plate that is an L shape and this moves back and forth so you can sort of sandwich the mag and take out any rocking motion or forward and back play. You can also see there's these two silver colored leaf springs that provide side tension to the magazine from keeping it flopping side to side. Now I will say I found these to be really tight. My magazines basically don't even fit very easily at all into the chassis. The paperwork does state that you can bend these any way you want, but I'm probably just gonna take them out. I took them out before and there's not much side to side play in this chassis anyway, but I did reinstall them to show you them there. You can see that the little springs in there. And lastly, you do have an adjustable mag catch that is adjustable for height. And that's simply done with these two screws on the bottom here. What I also really like is there are markings for both this plate fore and aft, as well as your height on your mag latch. And that way, if you plan to run this with multiple rifles, you can quickly snap a picture of the settings that work for your different rifles and quickly set it up using those pictures. I also did want to mention quickly, I really like how the magazine release feels. The spring tension is just perfect. A lot of chassis use like the little coil springs on the back, but this has a little bit more of a complicated spring setup. Well, it's not complicated, but a little bit of a different spring setup that feels really nice. Small detail, but I really like it. As I mentioned before, you do have a few options in the grip area. The grips are just polymer panels that you can remove from the chassis. So if you don't like the original one you get, you can change it out again, large, small, or this one here with the uh, finger rest. And I will show you that little pin underneath here because again, I was planning to just remove that if I didn't like the, um, the finger rest, but there is a little pin that comes out of there. You could probably use the chassis with that pin sticking out, so it's not a huge deal. Here you can see the C4's bedding area for the action. You have a very large cut for the recoil lug, and you can see the action screw holes here and here. Going on to the C4 buttstock area, this is a little bit of a different design than the Whiskey 3, which I did like. I found the adjustments on the Whiskey 3 to be quick and easy to do. But there was one small little pet peeve I had with the Whiskey 3, and that is no matter how tight you do up this screw here, there is a little bit of play in this buttstock piece. Now, you don't notice this when you're using the chassis normally in shooting, but it was just a little bit of an annoyance. So it's rock solid now on the C4. Starting with the cheek piece here, this has remained the same. It's just your single thumb screw that you loosen in order to adjust the height. You can also pull it completely off very easily, which is great for cleaning. Your length of pull adjustment knob is also the same, just a single thumb screw like so. And as you adjust the length of pull, there also is a detent to sort of help you in each indexing point and the indexing points are a little bit more of a fine resolution than what was on the Whiskey 3. So I have mine set at number three. You also have an adjustable bag rider here with this thumb screw on the bottom and you can adjust the height of your bag rider there quite easily and quickly. It's not spring loaded like I believe the Matrix Pro is. And honestly, I don't know how often I would use this thing. I probably will just leave it fully collapsed. And you also have another, spin this around here, you do have another thumb screw on this side, and this is for your butt pad height. So there's basically just like a dovetail system that this rides on. If you loosen this, you can see there's stoppers, so it won't fall out, but if you loosen this enough, you can see it rides on sort of a dovetail here, and it is marked as well, so you can find your position and easily reset it. 
You also can adjust the cant of the buttstock pad, but it's a, a little bit more involved. You essentially line up a pin to an indexing hole, so it's a little bit more permanent and it takes some time to do. The Whiskey 3 was pretty fast because once you unlock this, you can adjust the cant as well as the, the height of the buttstock with one screw. But the C4, again, has done away with that, which does lock up the butt pad. All right, so as you can see, the Carriage C4 seems to be a very promising chassis with all these features packed into it. It really was designed from the ground up to be a competition chassis. I'm really excited to use this chassis in a match to see how it performs, because I have no doubts it'll perform very well. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it in this season or wait for my new rifle being built to be ready for next season before I stick it in the KRG C4. But anyway, I wanted to do this initial video to just show the really neat features of this new chassis and just introduce it onto my channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, cheers.